This painting is titled The Persistence of Memory. You might have seen this painting before since it sometimes pops up in movies, TV shows, or maybe you've seen it in your art class. This iconic painting was painted by world-renowned artist Salvador Dali, a man known for his dreamlike surreal art. A few of his well-known pieces include The Elephants, The Meditative Rose, and the best of all, Lobster Telephone. When it came to his art and filmography, Salvador would always craft and deliver a piece like no other, leaving us to remember him as an extravagant genius we know him as today. But Salvador was also very weird. Well, to start, he might be a little crazy because when he was a kid, he pushed his friend off a bridge deliberately, almost killing him. Also in an interview, he talks about when he was a kid, there was this one time where he kicked his sister who was three years old at the time in the head like a soccer ball, leaving her talking like Walter Jr. He also claimed to be a fascist and was an advocate for Adolf Hitler. Granted, some people say he was just trolling his communist colleagues, but he also says he thinks of him the same way a man dreams of a woman. I guess he really liked his mustache. And this is more weird than bad, but instead of doing things with his wife, he liked to see other men do things with her. So much so that he brought her a castle to live in for these activities. And he can only go there if she sent him an invitation allowing him to go, even though he owns the castle. Then one day he was fed up with it and broke two of her ribs, but she was alright dude, she was alright. He would also compare his meat with his homies, but that's just normal. And with me finding out all these weird facts about him, do I now think of him differently? Yes. Do I think of his art differently and do I think it's now not as striking or awing as before? Not really, no. Because nothing changed about the art, it's still the same as it always has been. The only thing that has changed is my perception of the artist but not the art, cause I'm smart and the man is still a great artist. Maybe Salvador wasn't the best person I could have used on this because I'm gonna be talking about people like R. Kelly on here, but. Salvador was a munch, famous people. We love some, we hate others, and it's low key fun to feel either way about them cause I think most people are captivated by them, strictly only because of their clout and fame. Like they live in a completely different world than us. But I'm not trying to say they're better than us in any kind of way, no, there's TikTok niggas that are considered famous nowadays. I'm just saying we look at them differently, and the ones that people love get looked at very differently. They always get praised for their talent and their work, coming to a point where they get love for everything that they're in or a part of. Even if the thing they were in was ass, people will still say, hey, they were the one good part of it. And I'm not saying this as a bad thing. You can suck whoever you want. Shoot, I suck a few people. It's just that when these guys reach this level of stardom for a good period of time, it feels like they can do no wrong. Shoot, even if they do mess up multiple times, if the stand base is strong enough, they'll be forgiven the day of their fuck up. And even if their fan base isn't that big, give it about a week or two. If you're a beloved celebrity, you can get away with damn near everything. If you are at least Harry Styles level, you're good. I can see him getting charged for five cases of a hate crime assault against old ladies, pleading guilty, saying he'd do it again, and his fans would just make aesthetic courtroom TikToks of him. They don't care. You gotta be around that level to avoid cancellation. That's why you see YouTubers getting canceled left and right. None of us are at that level. Like I see people getting canceled for things that I say every day. As a YouTuber, you gotta be at least at PewDiePie level to get away with anything. What but what if cancellation was unavoidable? What if the celebrity did or said something so bad that even their fans are like, yeah, I don't know about that. Something that they can't come back from, or at least nobody will ever forget this. Their future career is in shambles and the public now looks at them with disgust. However, with all that said and done, all of that person's past works that we enjoyed, should we now no longer like them? It is associated with a name that did horrible things. Should we feel bad for liking their work? For me personally, the short answer is no. Mm. I like to separate art from the artist. It's like I said earlier, the person's music or movies did not change in any kind of way. It's still the same thing. It's just the person that's the weirdo. But he's always been a weirdo, we just didn't know it. It's still a piece of work that most of us enjoyed. But I can understand why someone would completely eliminate a celebrity's discography from their viewing and listening over the things they've done. Maybe that person can't detach the artist's work and reality apart. Like they see that guy in a movie and they can't pay attention to the actual film because all they can think about is, uh, uh, 
Uh, he's murdered people. I get that. I can't tell you to just ignore it and watch the film. They got every right to feel like that. It's just that I ignore it. I've seen so many movies and TV shows with actors I used to really like in it and directed by people I used to really respect. Then come to find out they like feet or kids, but the feet thing? I'm used to this now. I just assume everybody in Hollywood got skeletons in their closet. The only difference is, is that these guys got caught. I used to be a huge fan of Kevin Spacey movies. I know that sounds crazy saying that now, but I was. I thought he was a great actor. Him and Seven, American Beauty, and The Usual Suspects, these were all great movies that he added so much to and his greatest role of all. Call of Duty. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. I liked almost everything he was in, and when he got exposed for being what he is, that junk hurt. This was the first time I ever loved and respected a celebrity's work. Then I find out they were a garbage human, and that that won't be the last time. I didn't know how to feel at first because I loved his movies, but I hated the things he did in real life. I was in a dilemma. Will I ever be able to watch his movies the same anymore? So I rewatched American Beauty, and when rewatching it, I still felt the same. I still thought it was a great movie. I mean, yeah, the thoughts were lingering in the back of my head about the things he'd done, sure, but I still recognize American Beauty as a classic, and in my head at least, acknowledging Kevin Spacey as still a very good actor, making me realize my perspective on situations like this. Shitty people can make good art just as much as good people can make shitty art. Quick example, a good person who helps the elderly, loves to save orphans, and always donates a dollar to whatever the charity the cashier is pitching to them this time. They could be a full-time artist, but they draw like they don't have any fingers. And they're competing with the bad person who's serving 15 life sentences for blowing up the church. But he can draw like Da Vinci. It's clear the bad guy is the better artist. Also, I would like to thank the bad guy for his service. He made the country a better place. But for real, even though the bad guy can make good art or is good at making music or acting or whatever, they still deserve every bad thing that's gonna happen to them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not defending people like Kevin. He needs to be locked up and to never get any roles in anything ever again. Just because I think he's a good actor doesn't mean I think he deserves forgiveness. He likes little boys! You might be good at your job, but after the crimes that you did, you deserve nothing but a fatality. I don't want you to get confused thinking I'm on these people's side just because they made something like the beautiful people. I still think they're creeps. Or even if they aren't Hasoka and are just having horrible takes and ideologies on certain groups of people, they also suck ass as people. I'm not over here thinking Hitler was one of the most heinous, evilest people to walk the earth, committing acts of genocide, was extremely racist, and also being responsible of the death of millions. He was terrible and unforgivable. But he did make some pretty good paintings though. I don't know. But was he really that bad? Yes, yes he really was that bad. It's not something to debate about. And who cares about his art? He paints like Squidward. And that's disrespectful to Squidward. But you know who wasn't that bad? R. Kelly. I'm only talking about his music, of course, not that's a bad transition. I think R. Kelly is the prime example to separate art from the artist because this man is, I don't even want to say all his crimes. This man is EDP 3000, bro. But he did make some pretty good music. As hard this is to say, this man has made some of the best R&B music I've ever listened to. I'm a flirt, bump and grind. I believe I can fly. Those songs are class. I hate to say it, but they are. Like, I could be the prosecutor to this guy at court, giving him the worst possible sentence, which he deserves, but if someone start playing Remix to Ignition in the courtroom, I'ma start dancing out of impulse. I'm sorry, don't get me wrong. I'm still aiming for the death sentence for him, but damn, it's a good song. And trapped in the closet, oh, let me tell you about this. This is one of the greatest pieces of music media I've ever seen or listened to in my life. It's a multiple part story that starts with R. Kelly cheating on his girl with another woman who's cheating on her husband. And there's so much to this story and it gets even crazier with each chapter. Like, it was a midget, bro! A midget! How do you even think of that? The Trapped in the Closet series is like... You had to be there back then to understand its poetic nature. Even if you hate music because, I don't know, your ears don't work, it's something I would recommend everyone to watch illegally. Bro is a midget! But like everybody else, this man does not deserve a pass. Like, holy shit, his crimes are 
stacking on a daily, basically. This man has committed crimes against humanity. He's a certified weirdo and deserves nothing but hellfire and booty warriors in prison. All I'm saying is I still very much like a majority of his music and still think he's a horrible human being, but a great musician. He also produced and co-written one of my favorite R&B albums of all time, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number by Alaya probably thought of the title too. This album is great though. Then I come to find out they were married at one point, which really surprised me. Yeah, R. Kelly married her at the age of 27, and she was... Hey, bro, ain't no fucking way, bro. Let's, bro, ain't let's no just way, end bro. this video. I can find something to appreciate in any form of art, whether it be music, acting, writing, whatever, because I look at it as a singular product, a product that the creator of it only made to show people to entertain them or because they wanted to showcase something they genuinely love doing. I feel like that's why a majority of art is made and also money. But as long as the author's art isn't advocating their horrible behavior or things they've done, then I feel like I'll be able to separate art from the artist. But I completely understand why people can't do it. And let me say this again. I am not defending these people. I just like their work. I don't support them. I want to make that clear. Because I know there will be dumb niggas watching this hearing me say I like R. Kelly's music and I also like Kevin Spacey movies. And they think, mm-hmm. Yeah, you're probably a weirdo like them. That's why you're supporting them, aren't you? No, bro! You crazy! Have you not listened to anything I said? I do not support none of these people, bro. Don't get me twisted. Just because I said a dude is a good actor doesn't mean I want to be like him. No, bro! All I'm saying is... Harvey Weinstein is a terrible man who a woman, and I'm glad that he's rotting in prison right now. But he also produced Airbud, so that's a W. That's all I gotta say. I'm done here. And in conclusion, the man made graduation, man. Give him a chance. Sways, what's up, man? <laughs> go digging tricks, trying to steal my paper. Go, go digging tricks. Go, go, go.